Hi there, I'm Shelly from ShellyGreyTeaching.com and today I am here to tell you about the recent overhaul that I've given to my best-selling resource, The Multiplication Station. So just as your teaching evolves over the years, I believe that it's so important for my resources to evolve as well. This year, I'm making it my goal to learn everything I can about multiplication and to pass that along to you so that you can do your very best work in the classroom. For me, part of this process has been updating the multiplication station so that it reflects current best practice. First things first, the new updated version is available to anyone who has ever bought the multiplication station. If you go to your My Purchases section on TPT and scroll down to find the multiplication station, you'll be able to re-download and access the latest version. I am leaving the old version in that file for the next month or so, but the new version is there for you to download right now. Now, if you just recently put in the work of setting up your station in your classroom, you might be frustrated to hear that there's a brand new version available. For this, I apologize, but don't feel like you need to make these big changes and use the new version right away. The old version has worked for thousands of teachers, and I'm confident that it will work for you as well. What you might do instead is to continue to use the old version, but take some of the ideas from the new version and use them to guide your number talks or your mini lessons in the classroom. The purpose of this video is to tell you about the big major changes that have been made to the multiplication station, so let's get started. First of all, I have made a minor tweak to the order that the facts are taught. In the new version, we begin with the twos, tens, and fives, and then incorporate the ones and zeros. The reason for this is that most students already know the times two facts because they've worked with the addition doubles. So this is an easy way to begin. The tens are taught next, and then the fives are taught as half of the related tens fact. Then we work on the ones and zeros because they can be somewhat abstract uh, when we talk about groups of zero or zero groups. So by this time, students have a good understanding of multiplication and they're ready for that abstract nature of the ones and zeros facts. In the blog post that this video is included in, I'm linking to the full suggested order of teaching document so that you can download that and read through it so that you really understand this order. I've also taken out the 11s and 12s facts in this version. Instead, the final level focuses on facts beyond 10 times 10 and how we can use what we know to solve any problem using the same strategies that were taught with the 11s and 12s in the old version. The second big change is, in my opinion, the most important one. Strategic thinking has always been a goal of the multiplication station, but in this latest version, conceptual understanding is key. In fact, I've taken out any tricks that appeared in the old version, such as the nines trick or the just add a zero trick for the tens facts, and I've replaced those with strategies that promote conceptual understanding. So for example, rather than using a trick for the nines that only works up to nine times nine, I've replaced that with the strategy of using the related tens fact and then just subtracting a group. This enables students to solve any nines problem and does not limit them to only the basic facts. In every level, students are encouraged to make connections between facts, so important. I want your students to see that five times five is just four times five plus one more group of five. This has been done using a lot of arrays and a lot of connection making. The next big change that I've made to, is to the problem solving component. In a lot of the research that I've been reading lately, problem solving is stressed not as something that you do after learning, but as a sense making activity that should be happening before and during learning. So in this latest version, you'll find a problem solving activity at the beginning of most levels. And these are designed as problem strings where students begin with one problem and then they build on it by adding or subtracting groups. Another change is empowering students to work beyond just 10 times 10. So throughout the program, students are shown how the strategies that they are using can be used for any problem, not just one digit problems. So for example, can we use the nine strategy for a problem like nine times 25? Sure, we just multiply 10 times 25 and then subtract a group of 25. I want to empower your students. I want them to know that when they possess these tools and strategies, they can solve anything that they encounter. The biggest mindset shift that comes with this new version of the multiplication station 
is the shift from learning the multiplication facts to really understanding multiplication. Knowing the facts is great, but if it's not backed by a solid understanding, fact retention will be more difficult. Let's make that shift from wanting our students to just know their facts to wanting our students to become strategic mathematicians. Fact fluency will be a byproduct of that excellent understanding. That's it for the big changes. I'm so excited about this latest version of the multiplication station, and I hope that as you look through it, you are just as excited as I am about the conceptual nature of this program. I've included a few downloading tips below this video, so please take the time to read those. If you have any questions at all about the multiplication station, new or old version, please feel free to email me at shelly at shellygrayteaching.com. Thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful day.